Okay, so if you look behind me, I've been working on these segmented end caps for the for the Argosy. There's basically a section on each end, the front and the back. Originally, there were big plastic um, pieces in there that were molded and formed and had a little cubby cabinet in it, and they had just cracked up and were totally in bad shape, so I just threw them out. Anything in here that was plastic, I tried to get rid of because it was all falling apart. This is a really challenging um, little task, and I'm going to show you guys how it's done. We're going to do this side today and I'm going to show you how that works. The hardest part of this is the starting piece. So that first piece along the bottom that has to, has to follow along the window frame, uh, get a nice clean uh, line there. All these little pink squares you see glued up on here, that's two inch thick insulation that I've ripped into inch and five eighths pieces. That helps support it. So when I bend the piece, put it up in there, it doesn't go too far into the cavity of the wall or vice versa, it doesn't stand off too much. So it allows me, if I see that my aluminum is riding on that pink insulation, I know I'm in the right spot and then I just come in and fill in with um, batten around it to actually insulate that wall cavity. So that's that. what's that all about. I want to tell you too, uh, there's a link in the description. So Miller Garage is how I learned how to do all this. He has a video on build, doing in, segmented end caps, uh, which was super helpful. So between what I'm about to show you, my video and his video, if you're gonna tackle this, there should be enough information there for you to do it. I hope that's all the information you need because let's just jump in and get to work. Okay, so this is temporarily on there, kind of in a position. I, the great thing here is we're hitting right, kind of right at the seam with this other piece of aluminum. I'm on my line here. This is my mark, and this is my mark. Maybe just kinked a little bit over, but it was a little bit of play in this still. I've got a spring clamp here to hold it, and I'm making sure I have it pressed all the way up against the frame. So when I trace this, I'm gonna measure from my deck of my bed up and just kind of dotted line all the way around and then I can connect the dots use a little I got a little piece of aluminum here we can use as kind of a ruler and it'll end up being a kind of a curved slope line it's a pretty complicated little line but super easy if you just like get it set up here exactly how you want it and then trace it on there There is a giant Roadrunner right outside the window. Let me show you this guy. He's pretty cool. Super camouflaged. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to find him. Look at that. Where are you going? Don't come at me, man. I just want to, I just want to get a little closer. That was pretty cool. We'll leave him alone. OK, 
Okay, so there it is. I've got all five on on this side. Uh, I've got to run Klikos down this one right here. You know, I had no really, I didn't really know how my spacing was going to end up. I've got a little piece I'm going to put right down the middle to close that gap, make it look nice and clean. Um, basically, you know, I didn't talk much about this, but your spacing, every panel here that you see is about 10 and a half inches. And I measured from here with kind of a string around. Um, trying to hit it about 50 inches, which I think 50 inches put you more in here with a little bit more open in the middle If you wanted it to be perfectly symmetrical in a piece in the middle that was the exact same as all these You know Obviously, I don't have it set up to do that and I I didn't plan I didn't really plan any of this I just said wherever it ends up is where it ends up and then I'll I think putting like a three or four inch wide strip right down the middle Is gonna look just fine not too worried about that so what I'll do is go ahead and click this in, and then I've got to come in and mark this right here to that one. Get a nice clean cut, and then take each all of them off, cut them, and then put them back up, test the fit, and then we can throw rivets in them. Okay, so a couple things I want to share with you uh, that I didn't really show very well in this video. First off, you, you want to pre-drill each panel. So off the edge, I did a half inch with inch and three quarter spacing and off the long run, half inch with two inch spacing. So you would pre-drill uh, basically the end and one long edge and then you would go set it up, click us in that end and then start drilling it out and click us it in. So what you're going to do is click us that whole side up, leave them long like we did mark it off and then you're going to take the whole thing down and cut them. I didn't film myself cutting them but I just used my Festool track saw which you saw in the opening shot when I was ripping out the pieces. So once you cut them then you want to put up your insulation and then you can click some up and finally if the fit is right and there might need to be some adjustment there you can uh, finally rivet them on. Now a couple things too if you're going to leave them raw aluminum which I'm going to paint mine I know a lot of people are probably not going to like that but I want mine painted uh, but if you're gonna leave it raw, you want to make sure that you wear gloves because the oils from your hands are gonna stain it. It's gonna be really hard to get that off, and you want to make sure you don't scratch them. You got to take very good care of the panels. So those are just a few pointers. If you're gonna tackle this, hopefully that helps you out. What's up, Jed? You been eating some chocolate? You may be 15 by the time this thing's done, bud. Let's hope not, though. Instead of putting you guys through the whole process a second time, you already seen it once. I'll just do an awesome quick time lapse of this entire thing happening. Now. <laughs> Okay, so I took on a second project like I really needed to and I, I just couldn't handle spending two years restoring this air, this Argosy and then letting it sit out in the sun and bake in the sun and get rained on and just basically just deteriorate. So I, I, had, to, I had to build a place to put it. And unfortunately I had decided to do that in the middle of this restoration. So we completely redid the carport. If you've watched my series, this used to be a total mess. Basically just a pole barn with an asphalt floor full of garbage. Now it is divided out. So we poured a slab. We've just got done framing it out, putting up hardy board, place to park Emily's car, a spot for the Argosy. And then we still have this this storage shed was always here. This was a part of it. And then we bumped the whole thing out about six feet off the end. So I made it a little bit longer, same width. Pretty cool. Uh, the only thing that worries me is I'm not so sure how easy it's gonna be to back this into that little hole. You have to cut it just right and get it in there. Probably gonna take a few tries, but I'd like to think I could do it in one. Let's see.
I wanted to make a quick mention of this backup camera system I got from eTrailer. I'll put a link in the description. It has the rear camera with the guidelines. So this is so incredibly helpful for lining this up and getting it in this bay because it's super tight. And um, I think without these cameras, I wouldn't be able to do this without help. So look, I can check on my left side and my right. With the left, you can, see, you can see the edge of the camper and you can see the wall, so it really helps out. The right needs a little bit of adjustment, um, but you can still see the edge of that wall. So well, as I get closer in, I'll switch over and you can actually get a view where you get all three of these. So this is a great product. If you have an RV, I'd highly recommend it. Comes from eTrailer, link is in the description. Go check it out. All right, now I gotta get back in here to get my GoPro out. Golly, this is insane. I can't even get through here. I don't know why we made this so tight. GoPro. Okay, so it's in. Basically all that's good for now is storage, which kind of is what it's supposed to be for. Can't really fit anything else in there but the Argosy. But I got a place to put it now, so that's good. Okay, so the last order of business is getting this antenna mounted, which will give us Wi-Fi, GPS, and I think a few other things. I don't really know much about that. I just was recommended that antenna. I've got to put it somewhere up here in the front. You're probably thinking, well, now by now you've noticed that the top of the roof is white. I did paint it, so the the whole top of the camper will be this color. Uh, the bottom is going to be a different color, which I'm not going to tell you quite yet. This is Epiphany's polyurethane paint. Uh, it is rock hard. There's two coats on here. I just rolled this on and you can see how nice it looks. Just rolled. Now, th there are some challenges up here because I had leaves and wind and there's dirt in the finish, but we're going to do a full video on the paint here soon on the rest of it because I obviously still got to do the body of the trailer and the bottom. I just wanted to get the top painted so I could mount that antenna, put my solar panels back on, put the AC on. Tighten that. Okay, so the wires are through. I've got it all locked in. I got it sealed up there, tightened really well. This is gonna travel, these wires are gonna travel all the way through here and then go down into this area. You see all these wires here. This is all kind of control panel stuff. I've got uh, the battery monitor, sea level, water tank level gauges, um, a few other things. I cannot remember. My dad did a lot of this, so I'll have to ask him. But I've also got, this will be the pantry right here. So you have a fridge, little upper cabinet with your control stuff, pantry. I put um an outlet in here and then also 12 volt in here just for whatever i may need this is going to hook into a modem this cable so either the, you know the the stretch the distance is hard i think i know i can get to here so i'll probably end up putting my modem somewhere up in this cabinet okay so we've got the end caps made which was a huge hurdle i gotta say I, first off i'm sorry that it's been such a lag in content i know a lot of y'all kind of feel like i let y'all down and i'm sorry about that it's just been i've been really busy and I'll be honest with you, the segmented in caps, they just kind of were like a, sh a hit to the face. I mean, I don't know what I was thinking. I, I can't like, right at Christmas in December, I came in into December, I came into the camp where I was gonna start building interior walls, start working on the bathroom. And I realized immediately, like I don't have the top panel on. And then I realized I can't put the top panel on until I get the in caps done. And so I was just super bummed because I was ready to work on the interior and, and I wasn't there yet. And so it kind of just, it really stalled me out. 
I feel real good now though. I had those end caps done. They came out great. It looks cool and it's behind me. So it's just, it's like I said in the very first video, this is just one step at a time. And if you start looking at the big picture and that's what I've been doing, it starts to discourage you because you know you've got so much work. One step at a time, got the segmented end caps, got the top cap in. We've got the roof painted. We're gonna start mounting solar panels, AC, and then pretty soon we're gonna paint the whole exterior and get the interior knocked out. The interior should go pretty quick because that's you know that's what I do. I do woodworking, so I should be able to knock that out pretty fast. Hopefully, keep a steady flow of videos coming until we get this done. I do need y'all's help right now though before we shut this down. Okay, so here's the deal. The wheels are in bad shape. E-Trailer has been such a great supporter of this build. They provided so many cool products. They have a very nice selection of wheels and tires they've offered to provide, but I would love for you guys to pick. You guys have been so supportive of this build. You've left great comments, encouraging comments. You've watched the videos. So let's give you guys an opportunity to be more a part of it. I'm gonna provide two options. The first option is kind of a vintage look with kind of the chrome uh, hubcap. Um, I think that might be cool. That's an old vintage style of Airstream. So that's the first one. The second one is just an aluminum, kind of a 70s style Airstream aluminum wheel. I think that might be cool as well. I'm having a hard time deciding and I would love for you guys to chime in. So what I want you to do is when I post this video, I'm also going to post a poll in my community tab and I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the option to pick on that poll so that we can tally up and you guys can decide what kind of wheels are gonna be riding on this trailer. I think it'd be super cool and I, I need the help. So uh, be on the lookout for that community post. Should be there. Let me know what you think. Okay, so let's kind of close it down for this video. I just want to say thanks to you guys for coming along on this build, for being patient as I took a little break from it, a little frustration. We're back on track now and exciting things are happening. This thing's about to get painted. Obviously, you've already seen the white that's gonna go up here. I'm not gonna tell you what color we're going with down here. Final thing I want to tell you, I have a new hat. It's got a leather band on the back. It's pretty cool, help support the channel. Go get yourself a hat if you like to wear hats. I think it's a pretty cool hat. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave me a comment. Don't forget to head over to the community post. Let me know what kind of wheels you want on this thing. I'm excited to have you guys input on this. It'll be interesting to see what you come up with. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.